Wisconsin Broadcasters Association Hall of Famer Bob Baird ruled Milwaukee's airwaves in the 60s and 70s. He spoke with countless musicians and celebrities over the years. Bob collected remarkable recordings of these encounters, which he's now sharing with the public. Here's Bob. Better than the hat trick, composer, conductor Marvin Hamlich won the Oscar, Grammy, Emmy, and Tony Awards. He was one of only 16 people to do so. And he, along with Richard Rogers, won all four of those awards, plus a Pulitzer Prize. His first job was a rehearsal pianist for Funny Girl with Barbara Streisand. During the interview, I learned that he wrote a hit song for a top 40 female artist. Marvin was probably best known for the entertainer for the movie The Sting. He also wrote The Way We Were, and Nobody Does It Better for the film The Spy Who Loved Me. And there were many others, including Chorus Line. And they're playing our song, which was based on his relationship with Carol Bear Sager. Bob Berry, WOKY Radio, Milwaukee. How are you? Good, how are you? Pretty good. Look, I know this is a little late, but we've uh, tried to reach you for many, many months, and uh, congratulations on your Oscar awards. Oh, yeah, that's right. A little late, but it uh, always helps. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, of course, we all know you won uh, one for this thing and uh, two for the way we uh, were, correct? Right, exactly, right. There were two versions of uh, the way we were. What what happened to the other one? Oh, you mean the second song? Yeah. Yeah, so we wrote two songs. One was the original one that you heard. The second one was, was written after we all got kind of tired of the first one, and we all, and this was way before we recorded, you know? And uh, that second song is now just, as we call a trunk song, it's just sitting here called The Way We Were. There's not much need for it, since when you can't walk into an office and say, I've got The Way We Were now, because they say, I think I know it already. Yeah. So, uh, so it's just sitting around here, doing nothing. Boy, that's, that must have been quite a thrill for you, you know? Uh, yes. You're currently doing uh, music, or you did music, I guess, for an NBC movie, right? The Entertainer? Yes, it'll be out in March. Yeah, and then Beacon Hill, the, uh, the CBS Weekly. Yes, I've got Beacon Hill on, and then I've got, of course, The Chorus Line, which is the show in New York. Yeah, right, can't talk to you about that. I, I love it. Uh, I've uh, listened to it several times. Uh, the music in there is, uh, well, um, can I say a little vulgar? Uh, uh, some of the lyrics? Yes, it's, it's, well, it's, it's a Today show. It's about life in the theater, and uh, it's got a, it's, you really have to see the show, to be honest with you. Uh, you didn't have anything to do with the lyrics, though, right? No, no. The lyrics yeah. was written by Ed Cleveland. How did you get started in uh, music? Uh, you've been uh, in entertainment since you were a kid? Oh, I started uh, uh, at the age of seven learning to play piano. And then at around 18, I got certain jobs, particularly a job that I had with rehearsal pianist. I talked to Leslie Gordon a couple of months ago. She told me a few other songs for it. Yes, I wrote something on Life After Rainbow. How old were you then? Uh, 18 and 18. Uh, uh -huh. And you write some uh, Las Vegas acts too, don't you? I write the material for uh, Liza Minnelli and uh, Anne Margaret and Joel Gray. What about this, uh, the new uh, version of uh, The Way We Were by Gladys Knight? Do you like that? Do you like oh, what they did? Oh, yes. It's wonderful to hear it done, you know, differently. <laughs> You know, it's wonderful. She's terrific, too, I must say. Yeah, I guess you'd have to say it was recorded sort of as a rock tune, you know, when they do it. I guess you'd, yeah, you'd yeah. have to put it in that band. What do you think of the music today? Well, there's certain people that I adore. I mean, there's, you know, I mean, I love Elton John. I love, I mean, there's certain songs that I just go crazy about, you know. Uh, so I'm very big on it. I, you know, I listen to the parade all the time. I know what's going on. I know that I know the jive talking. I know at 17. I know a lot of the songs. You know, I'm very aware of what's going on. I think they're wonderful. Why haven't you tried to write uh, that type of song? Uh, because I don't enjoy going from one publisher to the other and getting rejected all the time. I find most of the songs that are making it now are songs that people write and record themselves, where they don't, where, they, where there are no middle men. And with me, it would mean that I would write something, and then if I want Gladys Knight to record it, I have to go to her publisher or her, to her place. So she can either say yes or no, right? Yeah. And that's right. very uh, bothersome to me. So I tend not to do that. I tend to stay with projects. Do you have any idea how many copies this thing uh, sold the entertainer? About 3 million uh, albums and about 2 million uh, singles. Wow. Now that was actually composed by uh, Scott, Scott, Joplin, Scott yeah. Joplin. And then uh, what, what did you do to it when you... You know, when you wrote the music for the, the Sting. Uh, well, I basically adapted all his music. I uh, took all his music and made it fit the picture. And then, of course, I played the piano on it. So that's what I did. But he wrote the music. So you didn't write any of the music? Well, there's a couple of pieces in, in, uh, on the album that I wrote, yes. In the movie, strip tease and something like that. But basically not. In the chorus line, there, the Bronco show that you wrote uh, the music for, I noticed there, there aren't any real songs that we can uh, play on the air as singles, you know, like hit, hit records, except for one, uh, What I Did For Love. Right. Uh, was there any reason that you didn't try to interject a couple of uh, so-called hit 
Yeah, I didn't do it because uh, I didn't do it because the show didn't warrant that. It, it, the show is a it's a different kind of show, and it, and when you're writing a show, you're not writing hits. Or at least you're not you're not supposed to be. You're supposed to be writing for the show, and this is what I thought the show needed. The next show I do, if I have a chance to get them in, I'll certainly get them in. Mm -hmm. But lyrically, they're, they're, the show is not about anything that is as simple as just love and let's groove, baby, and stuff like that. It's, it's much more complicated than that. It's much more compelling and much more emotional. It just wasn't a chance to do it. And I heard you sacrificed an awful lot to to uh, write the chorus line. Yeah, well, I had a, uh, I had a tour all set because after winning the Oscars, I had a tour set. And uh, when I heard about Crossline, I thought the idea was so good that I decided to uh, to go with that and you know not do the tour. It was a tremendous chance, but I think it's going to pay off terrifically. The financial thing is what I was. Uh shocked at when I read that you only got $900 to, to write it. Now, that's not the end, though, right? Uh, no, now that it's on, I get a weekly, you know, percentage of the growth. Oh, that's nice. So it's really nice. Well, thanks a lot for talking with us, and uh, continued success to you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Right. Bob Berry. Thank you for listening to Bob Berry's Unearthed Interviews. Be sure to subscribe and rate our podcast on iTunes or wherever you find your podcasts. You can find all the episodes at wisconsinbroadcastingmuseum.org. Check out Bob Berry's book, Rock and Roll Radio Milwaukee. Book sale proceeds support Angels Kids Fund and Donate Life Wisconsin. The preceding program was made possible by a generous contribution from Terry Bond.